Welcome to Soul and Side Hustle. All right, we're going to continue on with the drapes we're making in the shop. Um, we have the lining cut, we have the fabric cut, and today we're going to be putting in the header, the side hems, and pinning it. And that'll be, <laughs> I don't know if I get to all of that in one video, but that's the video that we are going to shoot today because we need to move on with these drapes. We've got another order coming, so I have to hustle on out of here. But um, so in the meantime, um, I wanted to talk some more about how important the cut corners are. And so as you can see here, hopefully, let me see if I can get it up here. Right here on the very top of that is a cut corner. Hopefully you can see it. All right. So right here on the line on the very top, it's also a cut corner. <laughs> so at this point, I have lining on the table. Move this down here and shoot it straight down the table. Straighten up a little bit where I had, I don't like the setting stuff on my fabric. Um, just to be on the safe side. It's just a habit I got into. I don't, I never lay anything on top of my fabric or lining or whatever. All right, so now, um, hopefully you can see me well enough. It seems like you're a long ways away, but here we go. This lining is laying on the table face up. Here we have our cut corner, just like we cut it. And just like we discussed, it came off the bolt and laid on the table face up. So, and my cut corners here. So now what I have to do is put a piece of fabric, drapery fabric on top of this, and that has to be face down. So, let me grab it. Notice yesterday I really need to speed up in here. <laughs> talk about this okay so we have the draper fabric on top face down cut corners over here which indicates that this fabric is face down we have our lining on the bottom face up this cut corner here indicates that this lining is face up um, all right, so this particular fabric here, you can see, you really can't tell any difference from one side to the other, but it's very important that you keep everything the same, even if it is the same on both sides. When you hang it over that window, there's a good chance that with the sun coming through it, if it's backwards or upside down, it may look just a slight, slight difference. And we can't have that. Not, you know, it's just not acceptable. So always make sure you mark your panels. Always make sure you put them all together the same way. All right. I want to cut this off here and I got to get some more stuff out. Oh, there I go, patting the table again. All right. As promised, um, we're gonna be putting the bucker in next and that goes in before the side hems and I wanted to show how to do that. And we're gonna do it one way. I wanna show um, people that's new to this business a really easy way to do it. Um, so it makes everything come out right. But um, we've been doing this so long and it's just easier for us just to throw it up to the machine and sew it on. All right, so let's talk about the buckram real quick. First on top of the list here is this. This is uh, 
ironing book them. It's not going to be a lot of details. They're all white, but one side of it is sort of smooth and the other side is kind of rough. The rough side has the glue. And when you use this, you're going to be folding it inside your fabric and ironing it in. When you iron it in, it takes a lot of steam, but it'll stick really well. All right, so we're not using that for this application. When we do, we, when we do use it, <laughs> I'll talk about it more. Get that one out of the way. This is also iron in, and it's for smaller, like cafe drapes, cafe curtains, and that sort of thing, when you just need a, a, a narrow buckram. So we got a roll for that, and it's, that's also iron in. And the iron in you can actually sew in as well. Um, but this is so narrow, you would want to iron that in. This is actually crinoline. There's something on it right there. Hmm. Anyway, this is crinoline. This is actually made from fabric. And this is for more fine detail work. It comes in different um, thicknesses, different weights. And you can, you can actually get this in a full, um, full roll and hang it up for like making clothes and that sort of thing. But this is the same thing, but this is for drapes. Okay, and this is the real crinoline made out of a fabric. Where we get our stuff from, and again, I'm not advertising from no one. <laughs> what comes across my table, I'll tell you what it is and where we get it. This comes from Rally. And they have a catalog and you don't have to be, anybody can order from them. And so that's your, um, the buckram we'll be using today. And this is how it comes packaged. Of course, it would be inside a box as well, but it comes packaged. And on the top, it'll tell you how many yards, how long the roll is and all of that. But we don't need this today and I'll show you why in a moment. Just to show, the stuff comes really thick, <laughs> really wide. So this would be for like a really super long, heavy, heavy drape. And so you would want a large um, header to, um, uh, you know, if the drape's really super long, you want a wider header, I guess is the best way to put that. So, but that's what this is. So you can get them and get everything in all different sizes. Um, I believe that's enough about buckling for the moment. Let me show you how it goes together. Okay, so moving on, um, let's get into this and put this drape together. So um, let's recap a little bit what we're making. And I want to talk about this. This is a uh, one width single panel drape with inverted pleats. And I'm not going to talk about how, <laughs> what inverted pleats means. But I am going to talk about the panel and the width <laughs> thing there. So in reality, if you um, go by the book, a panel is a one-way pull, no matter how many widths of fabric it takes to make the panel. Um, a pair splits in the middle and pulls back to the outside on both sides with the stack back. So hopefully that you can understand that. So um, a pair will slide open and stack back on each side, say like in front of a slider or something. Whereas a big window, you may want to push the drape all the way back in a corner and have the stack back on one side. That would be a one-way pull. That would be considered a panel. And each one of the drapes that makes a pair would be considered a panel. Okay. Um, we, <laughs> in this shop especially, in my aunt's shop, um, my mom, she's bad to do it too. We call everything panels. We call this a panel, the line and a panel, line and a panel of drape, whatever. But really and truly, this is a width. A width of lining with a width of fabric on top of it. And then we have our buckram. 
All right, so that out of the way. Um, for us, what we will do is go up and sew this on right there and pin it together and just sew it right on. But to make it easier for people who haven't done this before, I gotta get the iron out and I should have already had it plugged up and heating up. Again, I don't set anything on my fabric. So while that's heating up, we're gonna find our three inches. So here's my ruler. And we want to turn this up three inches. All right, so the header is going to actually be four inches. She does, she's hot. Three inches right there. Okay, so at the end of the day, when we're done with this, the reason this is three inches and not four it gives us an inch down at the bottom to tack. Um, it kind of helps with all the buckram and everything that's going to be in there and have a really small dainty tack if we cut out a little bit of the fabric right here in this area so we can put our tack right there when we're done. That's how we do it. Uh, some of the decorators will insist on a four inch all the way. They don't want that little gap right there because it is a little bit noticeable but once you make the pleat it looks fine everybody likes it you know nobody has a real problem with it but there are a few decorators that will insist on using the whole four inches of fabric so we're going to iron that crease in Okay, so now you fold that back. So your line. Okay, so we got our crease ironed in. And the next thing you do is pin the drape to the lining. And you want to have about a quarter inch of line showing above the drape. So let's see if I can show that to you. Right here, right through here, we need that quarter inch right there showing. And, and there's a reason for that. It's very important and it'll um, come up in the next video. You can see she's sewing right down that crease. How far above the crease are you, Susie? On the buckram. You want about a, a, a quarter of an inch. A quarter of an inch up on the buckram, and the buckram's laying right on the crease. Yep. I'm having to hand hold this to get in here, so if it's a little bit shaky, I apologize.
you can see, that's how we have our buckram down there on that roll.